ready. <laughs> Okay, guys, welcome back to Zachary Reality. I'm joined with a very special guest today, Micah. How are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you? Good. Um, we were just talking about how obsessed we are with each other. So <laughs> just need just wanted to catch everybody up. We have Micah on from Love is Blind and After the Altar. And we are gonna chat a little bit about it and a little bit about what is new and what is up. So Micah, you said you just got back to work. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I was gone for a little while off socials, just kind of resetting, doing my own thing. And now I'm back to work. I'm busy. I'm trying to catch up with everything on social media while also trying to work my actual job, which I work in tech. I don't think a lot of people know that, but I actually work in software tech and I do marketing. So I'm a busy girl, real busy. Oh my God. I don't, I don't know anything about tech, but I do know <laughs> everything about reality TV. So can you just educate us about like tech for a second? Like you have a oh, real people oh. job. You went to school. Do you love it? You know what? I love the company I work for. I'll keep that private, even though a lot of people already know, but I work for a big tech company and it's just so different. Like my day to day is, has nothing to do with like social life or like anything that has to do with like perception. It's all very like number based and things like that. So it's kind of a nice distraction, but it's definitely like the opposite of everything else that's like portrayed about my life. So it's definitely... It's yeah. a <laughs> I mean, you could go online anytime and there's a rabbit hole, especially with like the love is blind fandom. Like there's so many people talking. There's so much like speculation and rumors. And it's like, Micah, Micah, Micah. Like, what was it like yeah. having so many people talk about you online? Like just because Ugh. you came from such a normal life before and like you're you're a hot topic. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, it was really hard at first, I think just because coming up to the show originally being aired, um, I knew what happened and what took, took place. And so I never thought that it would have been perceived kind of the way that it did. So when things started coming out and like, obviously I was getting a lot of hate, I was honestly in shock okay. and it was really hard. I feel like it was hard for me to understand because I've never been someone to go on the internet and like say negative things about people. So seeing that coming in the forms of like hundreds of people, I was like, what the hell? Like, what is wrong with these people? Like, I'm just, I was just in shock. And it was hard at first, but you kind of get used to it and you realize, you know, the people that are commenting this, they're probably projecting something else and you just kind of have to ignore it. Yeah. But like, you're so fun to watch. Like, you're so entertaining, whether I agree with you all the time or I don't. Like, I just am like, I just need more. I need more. So, I mean, I'm glad that you are <laughs> posting on social media because it's so fun, so much fun to follow your life. Um, what is like your summer going to look like now that you're kind of back to the routine and stuff? Like, what are you working on? Yeah. I mean, I think right now I'm just kind of focusing on spending as much time as I can in Seattle. I've done a lot of traveling and now I'm going to kind of hunker down. The Seattle summer months are literally the best thing ever. It's kind yeah. of what our claim to fame is. It's like we have beautiful water and mountains and the weather's actually really great. So I'm going to try to stay here here as long as I can I'm gonna go to New York next week and a few other trips like that but other than that keeping it pretty pretty chill wait so. I'm going to New York tomorrow oh my god for how long like two weeks maybe three. Oh my god stop okay we're so we, for sure. are we gonna meet up and have a drink oh, 100% yeah okay because I, I know we would be besties in real life and a lot of times the people I invite on my podcast are like my favorites but like also people who have like an interesting story to tell like I had your bestie yeah. arena on she's the only one I had on from your season and oh. I was most excited to talk to her out of everybody yeah. and you because I just feel like there's so much like fun it, yeah yeah 100 no I'm so down we'll, we'll meet up for sure I'm flying in on like Thursday I think so okay, we'll hang out. Okay, it was so fun. Yay. Um, I did text Arena and I just told her that I was inviting you on and she had a question for you so do you mind if I read it <laughs> sure yeah okay it's a little shady so it's not coming from me uh, she says <laughs> what's Paul's biggest ick like what's the biggest ick she had with him that she had with him or I had with him that oh you, my god this that is you had with him oh my gosh okay I feel bad <laughs> I feel bad talking about him just because like I think we have a mutual respect not to talk about uh -huh. one another but I will say one thing, and I feel like other people picked up on this. And so it's not necessarily me being shady. It's just kind of an observation. I think that he acts as if he doesn't like the, the stardom or the, attention. You know, the, the talk or the buzz or the attention or going on a show. But I think he secretly really likes it and cares a lot about <laughs> perception. 
And okay. I think that that kind of gave me, gives me the ick still, just because it's like, you know what, just be genuine to who you are. If people don't like it, then that's on them. But at least like be forthcoming about like your intentions, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I do want to talk about after the altar, because that is why I was like, you got to come on and talk about it. Have you talked about it at all since it aired? No, I haven't talked about it at all. Okay. I love that we're getting this exclusive. What did you think of it? It was three episodes. There was a flag football game. We saw your bestie Shelby back. You had lunch with Paul's mom. What was oh, your overall thoughts? It was so boring. I couldn't even get through it. I was like, this is so boring. I was like, where's the tea? Where's the drama? But it was good to see everyone so happy. All the couples are genuinely really happy. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty much from what I've heard from people around, I'm not overly close to a lot of the couples, but you know, they seem to be really happy. So it was good to see that. Um, you know, it was great to see Paul's mom that was filmed like directly after the reunion. So okay. a lot of people are like, well, what, you need to cut off contact. You need to cut off contact. You have to understand me and Paul were still in contact at the time that me and his mom, you know, met up. And while we still have like a nice relationship, like I'll always answer her texts and calls. It's not like we're hanging out anymore. It's like, you know, people are there for, you know, a rhyme or a reason. And we mm -hmm. both need to be there for each other at that time. And we were. And that's kind of what that looked like in that scenario. See, I, I think as a viewer and what you probably saw online is everyone was like, it's been a year and she's still best friends with Paul's mom. And I actually yeah. saw Paul's mom getting a lot of flack for like going to lunch yeah. with you and being like, I'm going to destroy, I'm going to break the other girl's legs. Like, yeah. What is like and that's the, just her sense of humor. Like, that's what I she, thought, like set the record was, straight. Yeah, no, she's the most loving soul. I always told her, I was like, whoever gets to be your daughter-in-law is the luckiest girl in the world. You're amazing. She's so warm and so loving. And anything she ever said was not at a point to the other girl. It was just to try to be there yeah. for me. She knew that Paul and I were still having that back and forth and that, you know, that stupid shit. I mean, she was with him the night prior and, you know, she knew all that was still happening. And if she thought it was inappropriate, she wouldn't have met up with me. And on top of that, I reached out to Paul before the, it was, it was not our idea to film this, this lunch. Okay. It was completely, you know, a produced thing. Like you guys should get together. You know, people love seeing you guys together. You guys have a great relationship. Like let's, let's, you know, have a conversation. And I reached out to Paul and I said, is it okay? And he said, yes. Yeah, that's fair. It's, it well, is, like, you know? it's part of the storyline. Like, I think that yeah. like, since you guys were still talking, you almost needed someone to like play mediator who was close with both of you. So yeah. it kind of like only made sense for his mom to yeah. be there. So yeah. I mean, I know that it's TV and I think a lot of people know it's TV, yeah. but there is a lot of people who are like, they just still want to like have their opinions and like, that's fair. So it's just like, here yeah. you are to, I mean, here you are to tell us the truth. Right to hate. If they're going to hate, they're going to hate. That's just what it is. It's like, they'll find anything that they can, which is, it's fine. It's like, maybe that's their hobby. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone has hobbies and yours yeah. is obviously flag football. Cause you slayed <laughs> in that game. Didn't somebody want to attack you? Was it, um, what's her name? Chelsea. Did she say she, oh, like, almost I saw that. Her? Yeah. I saw that in her, or in like her interview that she was saying something like, I'm going to pull my good slag. Um, I think we're on the same team though. So I don't think that, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Oh my God. I'm dead. Out. But yeah, no, it was fun. The flag football game was good. Everyone had a good time. I'm pretty sure Shelby scored a touchdown. I think Irina might have even scored a touchdown. I don't know. It was it was fun, though. I didn't get the ball yeah. enough. I was like, I need to show my skills, but I didn't get a chance. I would have, though. People seem to, like, love your bridesmaids. Like, Shelby, Ruby, they're just, like, really in the conversation. And Shelby had, like, a part on After the Altar. Do you just, like, yeah. love this show because you can bring your friends in? And, like, is that one of your favorite parts about filming? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When they said that they wanted to bring Shelby on after the altar, I was hesitant. And okay. one of the reasons why is because not only was it really hard for me to, to see those things, I know in a way, even though she has a really strong exterior, seeing all that criticism, especially things that go, you know, it's more nasty mm -hmm. than just being like, oh, I think she's me. It's like, no, she's, you know, just talking about her looks and things like that. And it's like, why and as strong as you can be in some sense that's going to affect you mm -hmm. and I knew that once people have a narrative they see us as characters that's the character that they're going to continue to watch and see so it doesn't really matter what she says or does she's always going to be perceived in that way and to a sense I am too mm -hmm. and I was just worried that it was going to be like that but you know the other side of the coin is you know this is her only chance to get back on a screen and potentially change the narrative and so it's like I need to give her that opportunity yeah you have to like take the risk yeah. And then it's up to the editors. But I think they did a pretty good job with like yeah. closing out all the storylines. But 
um I like seeing Shelby she's great but what about Ruby how last season like there was that video where it looks like Paul like Slap slaps Gate. her <laughs> Slapgate did you ever clarify that yes because I I clarified it with both of them I was like did that happen like there's no <laughs> way I mean it I know both of their intentions and it would never be anything bad. The only thing that I was like, what the hell? It's like, why is he walking around with his hands like this? Like, mm. put, like, put, like it was just weird, but Paul's always kind of been like touchy in that way. And so I definitely don't think it was like on purpose. But when I saw it, I was like, it's like the worst moment of my life. I'm like, wait, what's going on over there? <laughs> wait, did <laughs> she, did she want to go to after the altar too? Did they not ask her? She lives in Austin. I think if she would have been here, they would have had her, yeah. But I actually had another friend who was supposed to film with us that day at Pike Place, and she had COVID, um, or she tested positive for COVID, so she couldn't she couldn't film. Yeah, and so Shelby and I were like, okay. nice, here we go again, walking in by ourselves. <laughs> okay, well, next time, just invite me, and I'll come to the 10-year yeah, reunion. 100%, 100%. I'll bring yeah. you <laughs> thank you thank you so when after the altar was being filmed you said that you moved somewhere and then you moved back so did you move to Portland and after the altar oh I had just permanently moved back from Scottsdale so I was oh, no Scottsdale. longer in Arizona yeah okay. so that's where I'd been living when the show was filming I'd been living in Scottsdale okay um and still my place in Seattle but then I moved back uh maybe a few months before the show even aired and I moved back to Seattle full-time so why did you move back you know, I just moved back because my family was here and I mm -hmm. felt like I wanted to be surrounded by family. I was kind of homesick. I missed my friends here. Um, it just made sense. My I had a tenant that was like leaving my condo mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll move back and maybe pivot. Um, I'm looking to buy like another home and it's just easier to live in one when you're trying to buy another instead of having a lease. Okay. That makes sense. Strategic. Strategic yeah. Thing. I do like how each love is blind season like focuses on another city. Cause I love geography. So I get so invested. I'm like, wait, now she's in Portland and Seattle. And where's this yeah. neighborhood? Cause there was that one neighborhood, um, Marshall and Jackie were talking about, like, they're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> no, for sure. It was funny. Cause I remember when the show came out, people were like, she's not even, she doesn't even go here. Like, she's yeah, even yeah. Like, and I was like, you guys acted like I casted myself. I'm in the cast. I'm the editor. I'm like, I just showed up. Like they asked me to come and I came. Like, I don't know what you want. How did you like get on the show to begin with? Um, I think it was like reached out through Instagram. Just like, what were you posting on Instagram that you think compelled them to reach out? I, literally. I don't know. I, I don't know. Something about me said like, I'm ready to get married now, I guess. Clearly. I'm not, <laughs> not sure. I didn't see the vision. I was okay. excited at the opportunity, but I wasn't like, if I was picking any show in the entire world that I would fit on, it I wouldn't. My first thing wouldn't be Love Is Blind, you what know. Would it I, be? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe like the challenge or something fun like that. Okay. I feel like that's like more my speed and my vibe. But when I decided to go on Love Is Blind, I was so excited and I was willing. If if I found someone I wanted to marry, I would marry them on the spot. But I never wow. felt like I was. It was. It wasn't my last resort. I felt like a lot of people were like, "I need to come in here. I need to get married. I need to do this." I didn't feel like that. And I feel like sometimes that comes across in like the way that, you know, I moved throughout, you know, the show and throughout the pods. And I feel like that was kind of a misconception. It's like, I wasn't so set on getting married. I was set on finding my person, but if I didn't find them, then that was what it was. But it seems like you have to get married. Like you have to get engaged just to meet your person. So like, I could never do the show because it's just, I'm not going to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do something permanent for TV. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely a trust the process moment. And I think that's why they leave like the final permanent thing to the very end. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. everyone's like doing it, doing it, doing it. You get to continue to grow. I think the engagement is just a way to prove that you're like sincere about it, I guess, or genuine and getting, you know, to the altar. But up until the point of saying yes, like I do or I don't, I feel like you're able to back out. Yeah, the en engagement is just so you can meet them. And then it's not yeah. actually... Yeah. So do you, do you count it as an engagement? Like when you start dating new people, you're like, yeah, I've been engaged. Or you're like, it's just a TV I, show. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to say because yeah. a lot of people know who I am in that sense. And it's good or bad. Um, but I never know what to say. I feel like, I guess I count it as a real engagement. It was a real wedding. So I guess it was a real engagement. Um, the feelings were real. It's just mm -hmm. such a weird situation that it's hard to explain. And I mean, I remember even after the show being sad, thinking like that I'll never have my first engagement again. Like I'll never get engaged for the first yeah. time again. Um, so yeah, I'd count it as a real engagement. But you will, and it will be special. 
and yeah, we'll be watching be and we'll be waiting we can't <laughs> and i'll be able to see him and it'll be really cute true yeah you'll never date behind a wall again like no. time no. has passed do you um like other reality shows like what are your favorite shows to follow besides like love is blind okay that's the thing I don't watch any reality tv like at all I just I'm just kind of starting I've seen two, some of the two octa handles mm-hmm. I've seen the first season of perfect match I've seen the challenge was something I really liked when I was younger I was obsessed with survivor when I was a kid I but love I, survivor I love survivor oh my god I was just watching like a thing about Boston Rob and his Amber. girls like, Amber. yeah I was just watching a thing about them and I was like Nostalgia. That was supposed to be me. That was supposed to be me on my reality TV show. Not not this, but yeah, they're they're oh. pretty cute. I'm like a survivor dork, like growing up. So who was your favorite player that's ever played or like top three? I was obsessed with um Boston Rob and I was of obsessed course. with Harvey. <laughs> no, oh, no, that's a good one. But who is the one, the really big guy? Rupert. Rupert. I was obsessed with Rupert. I don't know why. Like obsessed. I also liked that one guy who was like the villain. Russell Ham. Oh, Johnny Fairplay? Johnny Fairplay. Mm-hmm. See, I don't even need to think. I'm like, I know, I know. No, I know. you know, you know, you're way more than me. I had I had all the little, what was it called? The little handkerchief things. My okay. mom would make them for me and I'd like wear them. I was obsessed. Yeah. So what do you do when you're on your TikTok and uh, comes up on your FYP, Zachary Reality, talking about you and Love is Blind? Like, what are your thoughts? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, honestly, when I see myself, I just go scroll through. I, what I do like about your your pod, I will say, is you don't give a lot of like really like strong opinions. It's more information based. And so yeah. I kind of appreciated that, especially when I was like going through the trenches. So I would actually watch yours, but the other ones would just be like, oh, like buck tooth Barbie or like fix your extensions. I'd just be like, oh, God, like, yeah, I just had to keep going through. Mm-hmm. But no, I love seeing your content. Your content's really good. I feel like it keeps everyone like in the in the, in the no. loop that's what I love yeah. about it. like I like to be exactly. informational factual I like to present both sides like I always have favorites which I'm like allowed to because like I am a fan of all these shows but then like professionally like I feel like I have to be neutral about everyone and I just like yeah. to say what I think like what I see and how I have like what how I process it I just like to say like how I view it as like a pers- as like a tv show not as like a person yeah 100 percent, yeah I know I I definitely see that in you I feel like it's like not very biased which I like like it's kind of like oh information <sighs> here's what's going on it's good especially when I was going through the trenches I was like I'm not gonna get anything good so I might as well get something that says <laughs> either. okay well the two people I had on from your season are Micah and Arena so I mean the mean girls are actually <laughs> the best girls okay because I have had great conversations with both of them you guys can listen to mine with Arena if you haven't from a few months ago I had her on like a few days after the after the altar which you looked fabulous, by the way, at um, the reunion, oh. the reunion with, oh the, with your hair. I feel like hair. I look like toddlers and tiara. No, no, you look no? so iconic. And I felt like you just like <gasps> commanded like queen energy. Oh, you're the best. You're so how sweet. Was, how was filming that live? And especially with um, it being on so late. It was really rough. I, I wish, like, I still think about the reunion sometimes. It's like, yeah, the past is the past. Like, don't live, don't live in the past, but. I wish it would have been filmed once I had my bearings more. I feel like at that point I was in such like fight or flight, you know, I was just trying to like get through, like, I wish I could have talked more about like my truth and my experience. And I wasn't really able to, I felt like I was just trying to, you know, not get more shit or Mm -hmm. not say the wrong thing. And I feel like I didn't get to be myself. And so I was really closed off. So I wish that it would have happened a little later, but in that moment, I only got so much time to talk. I feel like I did the best I could do. It was just not a fun situation. (laughs) Yeah, those that shit's so intense. Like, and you don't have a lot of time, so you just want to get your point across. Yeah. But yeah. like it seemed like everyone made up at after the altar. Like there's doesn't seem to like you still like have a friendly thing with Paul, right? Like you guys are friendly. Yeah, I feel like everyone's friendly. I feel like it was all good. I think in after the altar, it's like you have to kind of close the storylines, but everyone was on good terms. It felt like, at least to me in my experience. I mean, to be honest with you, I never had issues with anyone on the show. Mm -hmm. the issues kind of came once they saw public perception and that was kind of something that was hard for me and kind of made me step back from friendships because it's like okay you were there you know what happened we were friends we were talking a couple days until the show aired and then the show aired and you're like which Uh. is is, is, I get it I get it self-preservation you know you don't want to get dragged down in it and that's okay you know I guess that's the world we live in in reality tv but it does change my perception on someone and I won't see someone as a close friend that didn't ride for me when I was low you know Okay, I feel that. 
for sure. Yeah. Because that, that's how you know who your true friends are. Like if they're going to support you and publicly or even just privately, like you need people yeah. that are going to have your back. Because at the end of the day, guys, like we're watching a TV show, like we have to be entertained and like social media is crazy. Like, I mean, these comments are just insane about the shows and these fandoms. So I hope you don't get too wrapped up in it because you're, you know, you did great, like overall, especially towards the end, like you redeemed yourself. And I hope that there's more to come with you on our screens. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You never know. I'll, I'll sneak my way on a screen sometime <laughs> soon. I'm sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, well, before we let you go, um, Justin Glaze, like, what is this? Is Are you guys dating? Oh my like, God. <laughs> where did this come from? Oh my God. I saw that on my for you page or something. And I was me like, too. Oh my God. and it didn't are, even come from me. Quick. It did not come. From I know. Me. I was like, too quick. Um, you know, Marshall and I are good friends and he kind of always was trying to maybe like connect the two of us a little bit. Yeah. And then we start talking for a little bit. It was nothing serious at all. And then he came down to Seattle, kind of spent the weekend together and it was really fun, but just super casual. And that was kind of the extent of it, honestly, nothing, nothing more to report there. So Period. No, okay, well, we love Justin. Period. He he's been on the pod um a couple months ago, so we he's like, a good guy. He's love really the nice. love the cool people that come on my podcast. Those are the, the best <laughs> reality stars. Only okay? the best. Only yeah. the best. It's prime time. Um. Well, everyone needs to follow you on Instagram, on TikTok. Are you on yeah. Twitter, YouTube? Like, what are you gonna do so like with your content to keep us engaged? I don't know. I need someone to tell me what to do. Okay. I'm just, I just don't know. I'm on TikTok a lot. I feel like TikTok is a lot more casual. It's fun to just be able to not be serious, look like crap, like just post random stuff. I think it's funny. So I enjoy it. Yeah. And it's the same as my Instagram handle, which is just Micah.Lucier. And yeah, find me on there for now. Maybe something down the road, a little bit more intense, but for now I'm sticking with those. And she just went to the fair. So we got good fair content. Oh, yeah. Like, just like Let's see my fair content. Fair content. <laughs> just like show us around Seattle and like try foods and do some hair tutorials. That's what I want to see. Okay. Well, that is great to know. And that's going to be the very first thing I do then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll be liking, commenting. Okay, guys, go follow Micah. And thank you all so much for watching and listening. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments and be sure to subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you for coming on, Micah. Yeah, thank you so much. It was fun.